guys, welcome back to one of my Kurunuki videos. So today I'm making a chawan or a tea bowl. So this is a bowl used for making matcha green tea. And here I've already hollowed out a piece of white grog clay and you can see me faceting the outside with a large spatula. So this is just a normal DIY tool used for filling in holes in your walls. And it makes a great carving tool for when you're wanting to make more angular straight cuts to the outside. So you can see me going around the outside making different angled cuts and ripping off the clay at the end. Um, and you can keep going until you're basically happy with how the char one is looking on the outside. I find this is a great way to add texture to the outside and also just give it more of an individual look. I also find it's quite nice to, once I've made my first round of facets to the outside, to then go again and cut even more. This gives a kind of a layered look, which I think is much more interesting um, to the final piece. Um, here I've flipped, flipped it over and started to cut the, ba um, the base of the chawan. So I like my pieces to slope into the foot, so I've removed some clay around the base and here I'm carving out the foot in a more decorative design. So here I'm using the same tool but just going around the circumference of the chawan, cutting into the base and this produces like a nice fanned um, design around the foot. So here I'm just finalising the shape of the foot, making sure I'm happy with the height and the width before I go in and carve the middle. To carve the middle I use a small loop tool and use the square end to um, carve this star design which I thought would add a really nice interest to the pot. Um, yeah, so here I just use the square end and carve these triangles to look like a star in the base. I then finish off just by sponging the foot. I flip it back over and uh, here I'm taking some weight out of the rim of the chawan. So this is quite good because you want it to be a nice satisfying vessel to drink out of so it's quite good to have a rim that is thin. I then go in and carve the inside of the pot. So here I'm focusing more on removing some of the weight from the chawan as traditionally chawans are meant to be very um, light. And also when you're making pots, it, it's best to try to get them as light as possible, which can be quite tricky for Kurinuki hand carved items. Um, here I'm using a small loop tool because I wanted to also give it a decorative look in the inside as well. So here I'm basically nearly finished with the pot. I just take a sponge and smooth over the rim and give it a, a, just a final carving just to make sure it's as thin as possible. And that's the completed chawan. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. I have another one coming up in a minute which I'll show you just a slightly different way of carving it. So this is a very similar size and shape chawan, but I just wanted to show you some variations of carvings that you can do on the outside. So this one I used the same tool, but I did more intense, brutal cuts in a way to give a kind of a stronger look. And um, I still carved the foot in a similar way, but I focused more on making the foot squarer and adding the fans to each of the four sides of the square, if that makes sense. Whereas the previous one was um, a much more rounder, softer design. I then go around and just clean up the foot, um, taking some of the weight from the edges and also just flattening out the middle. Um, here, because this foot is more square, I just carved a square in the middle um, of the foot of the chawan, which go is more in keeping with this um, more brutal, stronger design. After flipping over the pot, I make some more facets around the rim just to get that as thin as possible and then go in and carve the middle. This is to take most of the weight out of the chawan because we want it to be as light as possible. And here I've just used a loop tool and made some small decorative carvings which I think looks quite nice, um, especially when sponged over um, in the final piece. So that pretty much sums up the second um, chawan. I really liked how these were slightly different but also looked like they were going together as a set. 
and um, in the description bar down below I've linked up some of my other Kuranuki blog posts if you want to learn how to make a tea set or a um, sake set for example. Um, anyway, happy pottering and see you guys soon.